Robbing a pharmacy for Oxycontin was such a bad idea. And as I sat in my cell thinking about how much time I was gonna spend in prison, I wondered, what in the hell was I thinking? Looking back now at the robbery, we were destined to get caught. We had never robbed anything before. How hard could it be? We'd watched plenty of movies, right? We had talked about it so many times that I already knew exactly how I would do it. We had been filling scripts there for years. It was on the ride home from the crooked doctors and it wasn't so close that they knew who we were other than the fact that they had our names and addresses from our scripts. We were a crew of thugs to say the least. Tupac was the music and thug life was the tune. So on this cold December day, my co-defendant was getting out of the hospital from a car wreck a few days earlier. 50 couple stitches in his head and two sprained ankles. So Pukey can't walk. Yes, Pukey, I gave him the nickname Pukey when we were 15 during a drinking game. But anyways, Pukey's doctor didn't give him a single pill, just wheeled him out to the sidewalk and bounced. So I go pick him up in my crashed up Volkswagen. Now you have to know that both fenders are dented in from the countless wrecks that I've had from driving, all smashed out on pills. So Pukey is in the car and we are broke. Not two nickels to rub together and even hope for a genie. So first we try to shoplift. This was our thing. We had made thousands of dollars stealing, but that's another fail. Now you have to remember that I'm pretty fucked up on Valiums and Somas. I probably had an oxy or two in my pocket, but that just wasn't enough. It was never enough. So I'm driving and we decide somewhere through the fogginess and desperation that was our daily life that we were gonna rob Lester's Pharmacy. Why not? We had talked about it. We had planned it out a hundred times in our heads. So off we go to Walmart. Yeah, I know, I know, but we had to get a disguise, right? We couldn't just walk in there barefaced, demanding oxys. Pantyhose was a thought that we quickly dismissed and went with ski masks, but they didn't have any ski masks. So we just stole a couple of toboggans or scullies, whatever you call them, and we cut the holes out. Now don't forget this part because this part is very important later. So now we have these ski masks and we cut the holes out ourselves. And now thinking back, why in the hell did we cut the mouth holes out so we could read my lips, Oxycontin. I'm sure somewhere in between there, we got high and off we went. We had never robbed anything before. We were thieves. We were drug addicts and we had no clue how this was gonna go. First, we ride through the parking lot and we waited till it was almost closing time. That way it would be dark and there shouldn't be any customers there. We only needed two minutes, right? How long could it take to rob a pharmacy? We had watched drugstore cowboys. All we had to do was get the pills and bounce. So we parked down the road at the KFC and walked back up to the pharmacy with our homemade masks in hand and no gun. Just two stupid kids strung out on oxys. Right before we pussy out and turn and walk back to the car, some last minute surge of stupidity took over and we burst in the door, looking like two idiots from a bad comedy. Bent down behind the display, there was a dude changing the rugs on the floor. Now this was one of those things that we didn't expect. But like the pit bull that he was, Pukey starts yelling at him in disbelief and commitment at the same time. Get down on the fucking floor! Get down on the fucking floor, don't move! Now there are two women behind the counter, staring in shock at us with these stupid homemade masks on our heads. Never go for retard. Now I'm so fucked that I looked him straight in the face, cross-eyed from the pills, and I say, Get all the 40 milligram Oxycontin. Now the reason this is ridiculous is because this is a fucking pharmacy and all I ask for is the 40 milligram Oxycontins. Not the 80s or the 160s or any of the other numerous other drugs that I just seemed to forget about when I put this stupid fake ass ski mask on my head. Now the chicks are both pretty scared and they put two bottles of 40s on the counter. At this point the rug dude is giving Pukey some trouble. He doesn't want to get down on the ground. So what's Pukey do? Don't make me pull out this 9mm, motherfucker! Now don't forget that we never had guns. It just wasn't our thing. But the dude complied enough for Pukey to leave him and come over to the counter and tell the women that we wanted all the Oxycontins. One chick gets the rest of the Oxys and puts them on the counter. We snatch them up and the rattle of the bottle seemed to make us faster. We run out the door, stuffing them in our pockets. All we gotta do now is get back to KFC and get the fuck out of there. Now as drug addicts, being healthy and going to the gym wasn't exactly high on our list of daily things to do. So on the run back to the car, I am so tired I can barely stand. I can see the car, but I can barely stand up. Somewhere in this craziness, I had dropped my mask. Never go full retard. But I was so tired, and the car was right there. I could see it. So I left the mask right there on the sidewalk, 25 feet in the wrong direction. Never go full retard. I 
know, I know, this is the moment that you all just groaned at me. I understand. But we did make it to the car and out of the city, stopping to throw away the pharmacy bottles in a dumpster and back to my house. We're good. We made it. So we sit down and cut out one of the fattest lines of oxys I have ever seen, and we snorted it like a scene from Boogie Nights. As we sat there looking at each other, high as gas, I told my old lady and Pukey that no one ever needs to know that we did this. Cause Pukey was always quick to want to tell a story, and storytelling he does. The next thing I know, I have several people asking me if we did it. Pukey had been out telling stories and too trusting to assume anyone would snitch. I mean, it was all over the local news. So yeah, I know we're fucked. The next year is 1999, and we're in jail on some other theft charges, I'm sure, and the investigators come with a search warrant for our bodies. They want hair fibers and blood. At this point, I just know I'm totally fucked. They took hair samples, bro, and all of you that groan when I said I left my mask, you're thinking the same thing. Now, about a year or more goes by, and no news is good news, but that night is still in my head every day. I knew I hadn't heard the last about that robbery. Indictments drop, and they have us both on the docket. Robbery, $50,000 bond for me during a fucking blizzard. So now I'm in county, sick as fuck, I'm withdrawing. It's a small five man block and there's nothing to do. It's a horrible two weeks and then I got bond. The same people that snitched on me paid like $1,200 to get me out. I know, great friends, right? Until they weren't. So all this is in the Virginia state system. I had several lawyers calling me wanting to take my case. So I took one of them and we went to trial. Now the piece of the puzzle that you think would be the final straw wasn't. The traces of hair were not a match to either one of us. How in the hell I did not lose a hair in that mask, I will never know. And whose hair did they find? But that didn't matter now, cause the state had to throw it out and give it to the feds. I was so pissed. I cussed the judge, I cussed the prosecutor, I cussed the sheriff so they had to carry me out of the courtroom. After all this bullshit, now I have to deal with the feds. And I just know I'm fucked. I just know I'm fucked. Another few years goes by and I'm locked up on an assault and battery charge. It's December 2nd, 2003. Five years exactly to the day of the robbery. I'm sitting in jail, just got busted off work release because they caught me with the oxys. Folks, feds are here to see you. Of course they are. Let me guess, robbery? Statue of limitations was five years. Just one more day, bro. One more day and they wouldn't have been able to charge me ever. I was indicted on four counts, robbery, use of a firearm during a robbery, conspiracy, and conspiracy to distribute. The conspiracies came from the scumbags that snitched on me, which is a whole different story. Let me know if you want to hear about those losers. After a few months of shitty jails, shitty food, and shitty people, our lawyers set a meeting with the DA. He said if we could convince him that we didn't have a gun, then they would drop all the charges except the robbery and give us the low end of our guidelines around 60 months, which is five years. We just told the DA the truth. We did take the pills. We did rob the pharmacy, but we didn't have a gun. Now, just the fact that Pukey said, don't make me pull out this nine millimeter, cost both of us extra time. Even though we didn't have a gun, we still got extra time for a dangerous weapon. What the hell is even that? The DA asked us to tell him some other shit, but even if I wanted to snitch, I had no idea what he was talking about murders and some other crazy shit in a different state. No sir, I don't know nothing about no murders, bro. From there, we were off to court where the snitches waited to tell their time away to anyone who would listen, signing their bitch ass names to the statements that would get me six years in federal prison. Anyways, I don't tell my stories to teach you how to do the dumb shit that I did. I tell them for entertainment purposes because I'm pretty good at it. But don't get it twisted, T. I hope to show you what not to do. This story right here cost me six years in prison. I strive every day to not be the person that did this. I was an absolute shitbag. I knew I was an absolute shitbag. I just didn't care. The same type of shitbag that I look at today and I know these dudes are shitbags and I know I was just like that. I'm not that dude anymore, but I also know I'm not perfect. I hope my journey can be insightful and entertaining. Thanks for watching and until next time, don't forget, don't sweat the petty things, pet the sweaty things.